In the next few labs, I want to take a look at how various objects such as a cone, which would be the point in contact with a plane, this wedge with this line in contact with the plane, the uh, bottom face of this disk in contact with the plane, or an object falling in space, what occurs as it comes in contact with the plane. So we'll assign gravity and we'll do 2D contacts and then we'll also do a 3D contact in the next four labs. Let's start a new part file and on the XY plane I'll start a new sketch and then I will draw a rectangle from the origin over to the left uh, about like that and then I'm going to dimension the width of this rectangle as 12 inches and let me turn on the visibility of that origin center point so we can keep track where the origin is at and then I'm going to dimension the height of this rectangle as 0.5 I'll draw another rectangle and I'm going to do that rectangle about like this and I will draw a rectangle from this corner over to about here and from this corner down to here. I'll then put some additional dimensions on here. So I'm going to dimension this as two inches and uh, let's undo that for a minute and I'll dimension this width here first and then I'll uh, dimension that. So I will dimension the distance from here to here as 0.25 and then I will make these other lines equal. I'll do equal and I want to get the shorter line underneath there so with the select other I'll get the shorter line. I'll make that equal to this short line and then I will make this shorter line underneath here so I'll do the select other make that line equal to the shorter line under here and then I will dimension the height from here to here as 0.625 and I'm going to change this dimension then to 2 inches. Okay, so we did 1, 2, 3, 4 rectangles, made the width of these rectangles all 0.25, 2 inches from here to here, 0.625 from here up to here. Then I'm going to do extrude and I'm going to select this area, this area, this area, this one, this one, so all of these areas and I'll, I'll go 12 inches mid plane. I'll make that sketch visible again and I'm going to do extrude again and I'm going to select this area and this area and I'll set that mid plane. I'm going to do cut and I will do that a distance of 11.5. And then I'm going to do extrude again and I'm going to select this area and I want this area right in here not all the way up to there mid plane and I'm going to do that a distance of 2.125 mid plane cut. I'll turn off the visibility of that sketch number one. I'm going to mirror this to the other side and so I'll do a mirror. And I'm going to select the, I want to mirror the entire solid, so I'll select solid. And then for the mirror plane, I'll select the YZ plane and mirror that to the other side. I'll then do a new sketch on the top plane. I will then do a center point rectangle at this point uh, over to this edge. And then I will dimension from uh, this point to this point as 0.125. And actually, I meant to do that as 0.25, so I'll change that to 0.25. And I think I want to make that a little bit greater, so let's do that as 0.375. I decided that I want to make this the, the 0.375 as, as well. And so I'm going to go back to that extrude cut. Let me get out of this sketch, and I'll go back to this extrude cut. I'll say Edit Feature, and I'm going to do that as 12 minus the 0.375 times 2 so that I'll have 0.375 on this side 0.375 on that side and then I don't really need this dimension anymore so I'm going to edit that sketch and I will delete this dimension and then I'll make coincident this point to this line the sketch becomes fully constrained and actually we need to make sure that it's constrained on this end as well so I need to do coincident the point to the line to this point and now the this sketch is fully constrained it tells us down here in the corner that it's 
fully constrained. I will finish that sketch and then I'm going to do split and I'm going to split using this is my split tool and I'm going to split this face. I'll say okay to that. I will then do thicken and I'm going to thicken this area right here and I'll see if I can select also this area but I'm not sure that I can. I might have to do thicken as two different steps. It doesn't look like it's going to let me select that. I'm going to go up 0.25 on this one and we will also do this one as well uh, 0.25 I didn't get that first one done do undo that and do it again I'm going to do thicken and I will select this face to thicken and I, I want to go 0.25 on that face now I'm going to turn off this automatic blending and then I will apply that one and then I'll select this face and I will say OK so I brought up those two edges 0.25 I'm going to change my part color to blue and then I want to change the color of this face to some other color so I'll go to the properties of that face and I'm going to make that gray and I will save this file and I'm going to call this planar plate I will then start a new part file and I'll start a new sketch on the XY plane. I will draw a line straight up from the origin. I'll come over horizontally and I'll come back down to the origin. Let me turn on the visibility of that origin so we keep track of where it's at. I'm then going to change this line to a center line and I will dimension the distance from the center line over to that corner as one inch and I'll dimension the height of this as 1.5. The sketch is now fully constrained. I will do revolve and I'll say OK to revolve it around that axis. I'm going to change the color of this part to yellow and I will save the file as cone. I don't think we really need the origin point visible so I'm going to turn off the visibility of the origin point and then I will start a new assembly. I will save this assembly and I'm going to call it point plane joint. Let's tile our windows and so this is my assembly. I can control drag this plate over into my assembly. Now when I did that though I just happened to drop it wherever I let go of it on the screen but we'll move that to the origin in a moment. So then I'm going to control, control drag this cone and I have it now in my assembly. I want to make sure that this part is at the origin and so I'm going to unground this and actually I'm curious to see if we need to unground it. I'll go to the assembly tab and underneath this productivity set of tools I'm going to set ground and root and it asks me which components. I'll select this component tell it that I want it grounded at the origin. I could also tell it to create flush constraints if for some reason I want to do that. I'll say okay to that. It may have been at the origin uh, to begin with when I when I dropped it in here. I didn't check that to see. Alright then I'm going to do constrain and I'm going to try to select a point on the end of this. If I put my mouse here and I do select other I can do face but I don't see an option to select the point. So I will do that constraint again. This time I will come over here to the cone and I'll select that point from here and I will also select the point at the origin of the planar plate. Now I was expecting the center point on the planar plate to be up here so I made a mistake on the original part on, on this plate and so if I look at it I expected that point to be up here on this face and I see that I have an extra thicken over here and so I need to uh, figure out where I did that extra thicken. So here here I'm okay. Point is on that face where I would expect and then I accidentally put in an extra thicken here across that entire part and so now I'll bring this back down so I want that side thickened, this side thickened and so now this point is uh, at that. So we'll say that I did that as a teaching moment. Yeah we'll go with that. I'll save everything. Now I'm going to turn off the constraint that we put on here. So I'm going to right click on that and suppress that. And I like to rename that as home position. So if we want to put this back at that point, 
Uh, anytime we can unsuppress that. Actually, let's do that uh, now. Let's unsuppress that. I want to make sure that this cone is at a, a little bit of an angle. So I don't want it straight up and down. So set it at a little bit of an angle and then suppress the home position. Now, after you do that, don't move this because it could move uh, anywhere. Now, I'm going to turn off the visibility of those points. So I'll go to the View tab under Object Visibility. I'll turn off uh, all work features and that will turn off those points. Then I'll go to dynamic simulation and I'm going to turn on gravity for this assembly. So I'm going to right click on gravity and I'll select define gravity and I want it perpendicular to this face so I can either select one of these parallel faces or a vertical edge make it parallel to that face. If you come over here the arrow and click on external loads the arrow will turn off but it's still there the gravity is still applied and notice though that both of our parts are in the ground group so I need to put a joint on here which will bring this into the motion group so I'm going to do insert joint and I'm going to go to point line now if I don't see it here I need to turn on the additional joint table so I in order to do that remember on the simulation settings turn off the automatically convert constraints and I'll tell it no not to keep any existing joints and now when I go to insert joint I see that I have more options and I'm going to do this one for a point plane it asked me to select component number one notice it's asking for component number one to select a plane and then for component number two it's going to ask to select a point so I need to select this plane first and then I will select a point. Now we could set an origin but we don't really need to. I'll select point and I'm going to come over here and I want to get the point on this cone but it tells me that I didn't select a point by clicking on that face. Let's see if I can do select other. So if I do select other it doesn't come up with the point so we will have to come over here change this to the modeling view and I'll go to that cone and I'll go to the origin and select that center point here All right now I probably should have set that origin location because see we here we it moved it uh, over into this area now, I'm just going to drag this up here and get this up here on top someplace now you need to look at this from different views let me look at it from the right side view and uh, somehow I lost my position if we go too fast it will be difficult to get the position. Hard for me to control it because I'm only doing 100 calculations so let's change this to 500 calculations and now when I drag this it, it will move more slowly because it's having to do more calculations. So it says images here but it's also it's calculating 500 positions of that cone. So we define gravity. Let's click back here to the dynamic simulation browser. We define gravity. We have our point plane constraint and it's moved that cone from the grounded group into the mobile group. I'll then go ahead and play this and we see that it falls through the table. So let's stop this, rewind it, and I'll go back to construction. So this is the first time that we've used the simulation player. When we want to make a change over here, right now this is all grayed out. So we'll click rewind and then go back to construction. Then we can make changes because it's no longer grayed out. I'll do insert joint again, and this time I want to do a 3D contact. It asks me to select component 1. I'll select a table. Component 2, I'll select the cone. And I'll say OK to that. And now when I play it, it goes over and it stops when it falls against that table. Now we could put some forces on here to have this part spin. We can adjust friction. We can adjust how it acts when it comes in contact. Uh, similar to the restitution that we saw with 2D contact. I'm going to hold off on that for a later lab.